Hello and welcome to another installment of Microphoneless Me with your host London Tipton. Dark Souls, you know them, you love them. But aside from their tasty flavor, what else do they offer as poor pygmies? That's right, some great armaments. And which is more useful than the one and only Grass Crest Shield? Probably the Cauliflower Head from Bloodborne. Hashtag Fashion Souls. Let's begin. Step 1. Every great work starts with a sketch to get all the dimensions needed. That's why they call them blueprints, because you're sad if you screw it up. Don't forget your materials, in this case it's floor mats, a T-square, and a razor blade. Step 2. Using your square, slice off the puzzled piece ends of two mats to make a flat gluing surface. Using your worthless silver sharpers that dried out after only ever using them in one project, draw all the bounding lines for the shield's outline. Feel free to cut off the remaining puzzle pieces, and remember, you don't have to cut in one swipe of the knife. Doing multiple passes is safer and gets you a cleaner cut. Then freehand the curves. Mark the sections you want to throw away that way you don't accidentally fulfill the blueprint's prophecy. Cut away the remainder foam, and flip the shield over. Carve a small channel down the center of the shield, be careful not to cut all the way through. Or, do cut all the way through, and cut a sharp bevel and glue them back together. That would be a better sharp looking option probably. Step 3 I think, using a heat gun to ease the foam's stress give it a nice curve, this is what gives the shield its more or less final shape. But it also makes gluing the sides of the channel you carve much easier. Speaking of, slap that fat daddy with the last of your glue and bend the shield into place and hold until the glue dries, which is only like a couple seconds. A tip I wish I had thought of when making my head form a few weeks ago that will serve you very well is, if your cuts look a little ragged. Some 120 gris sandpaper will smooth out that foam incredibly well. Also take this time to round the shield edges with a Dremel or sandpaper. Using your finger as a spacer, and a camera that refuses to lock focus, draw the border around your shield where the metal lip would be. If you have a very thin 2mm foam or something you can use to make an actual 3D lip around the shield that would look better but I didn't have that and the stuff they had at Joann's was extra expensive so I used another dirty little secret. Hashtag all American rejects. Score a line along the border, don't cut all the way through, and then hit it with the heat gun and watch that baby open up. But be careful getting too close for too long with the heat gun could burn your foam. Or so I've heard. Step 4, using a pyrography kit, or a soldering iron, get to a well ventilated space and burn in some cuts and gouges and emotional trauma into the shield. Use Mod Podge to seal the foam, and use a silver spray paint to paint the metal parts metal. I used acrylon hammered silver spray paint, but it didn't really wow me and it was also ungodly expensive, so use what you like. Mask off the center line and start with the base coats. For some reason I always remember the grass crest shield as being green, but it's actually an antique yellow and white color, a dried blood red, and a blue gray color. Strange how my brain constantly fails me. Step 5. Spend literally almost two weeks not doing anything to the shield because you dread ever having to use a paper printer. I hate them I hate them I hate them. They never work and they are always a hassle. 3D printers are no problem, they are easy to understand and they actually do what they are told. Regular paper printers can go to heck. Step 6. Spend 30 minutes getting a stupid paper printer to print your stencil and carve out the unnecessary parts. Tape it down to your shield and lay down your base coats. The red side is what gets the blue color, so I used a base coat of the same antique white that the other side has. The white side's symbol is supposed to be the same blood red as the, the base coat for the red side. After finishing a few coats of red, the color of angry men, on the white side I threw away the stencil and hand brushed on the coat of the gray blue I mixed up for the red side. The choppy splutchy nature of the symbols looks so good and handmade. I love it. You have to realize that historically speaking these things weren't perfect pristine items, they were handmade by smiths and artisans, not stamped out of metal in some robot precision factory. So the more handmade something like this looks the more character it has. Step 6 Weathering. 
Just some water to down dark brown paint was all that was needed for this. Paint it on and wipe it off. It turns your antique whites a yellowy color which is perfect, and dulls down the vibrant blue, and unifies the whole paint job to make it look like it's actually been used in this dark dirty world. I outfitted it with some very tenacious velcro to stick it to my wall, and it felt real good. So I stuck it to my door instead and it worked very well until I removed it to show someone and now it doesn't stick anymore. So now it sits on a shelf. As all things must. Thank you very much for watching Skeleton Crew Props this week, I'll probably have a microphone soon, or I'll have a resin 3D printer instead. I haven't decided which one I want more. I think the Australian robot voice is very funny. Have a good day.